When you're a little different from what is considered to be normal, you may easily become a victim of bullying during your school years. This is exactly what happened to George. Years later, something happened that shocked and surprised everybody. The first time David saw George, he was a skinny little boy that transferred to their school in the middle of his ninth grade. When new kids came to this school, they were evaluated by the popular group of kids, and if they did not impress, they would be rejected and often bullied for the remainder of their high school career. During the first week of school, David found out that George had lost his parents in a motor vehicle accident just a few weeks prior. This resulted in him moving in with his grandmother. She was the only family he had left and therefore, George was placed in her care. His grandmother was a really old and sickly woman who now had the responsibility of raising a teenage boy. She had very limited resources and it seemed like George's parents had not left much behind to help take care of him. What made George even a bigger target for the bullies at school was the fact that he had very bad teeth and he wore thick glasses because of an eye disease he was born with. He had no fashion sense and wore old crumpled shirts. In a school where rich children wore fashion brand clothing and drove to school in fancy cars, George was a complete misfit who did not adhere to any of the social standards set by his peer group or the school culture. George was also very shy and soft-spoken. Every time a student would be rude or push him aside, George would remain quiet. He never retaliated or said something back. Instead, he would simply pick up his things and walk away. There was a tangible kindness in his demeanor that was not appreciated by his peers. It was on his fourth day in school that George and David became friends. David wasn't part of the popular crowd in school either, but he usually managed to blend in just enough to avoid the bullies. He hated seeing how George was treated when he first entered the school. David's natural instinct was to get up and punch the bullies, but he knew that this would unfortunately resolve nothing. Instead, he decided to reach out to George and become his friend. To his great surprise, the two of them had a lot of things in common. David soon found out that George was very intelligent and that he had a lot of knowledge about space and science. He also had a great sense of humor once you got to know him. The second good surprise was that George only lived a few blocks away from David, meaning that it was easy to meet up after school. David's parents were good people who thought their son to have respect for all humans. Although David had the means, he did not wear brand name clothing and his parents made him work for the things he really wanted. The first time George came home with David, his mother immediately saw that their visitor needed some new clothes. So she asked David to go through his closet and make a pile of the ones he seldom wore. Thankfully, both kids wore the same size. It may sound a little cliche, but George soon became like the brother David never had. When he stayed over on weekends, they were allowed to use David's dad's telescope and watch the stars. Then George would teach his newly found friend stuff about constellations and planets that was very fascinating. Although he was never completely rid of bullying at school, he also started blending in a little more and the bullies shifted their focus to new targets arriving. George and David avoided conflict at all costs and protected each other as much as possible during their school years. David had found the friend and the brother in the most unlikely spot ever, and the bond between them became stronger with each passing day. In their final year of school, David's parents helped George's grandmother to be moved into an old-age home where she could receive better care. His dad helped to renovate her house a little and rented it out to give her an additional income. It was therefore no surprise that George moved in with the family for the last year of high school. They say boys will be boys and will always be up to mischief. This was partly true when it came to David and George. But they also both worked hard in school because they wanted to become scientists. Both of them had to qualify for a scholarship if they wanted to attend to the college of their dreams. So they studied hard for months and wrote their essay at the same time. They achieved another milestone together when they were both accepted into the same university on full scholarships. David's parents were very proud of what they considered to be their two boys. It was difficult for both of them to move away from the home, 
but sharing an apartment while they studied made the transition much easier. When George's grandmother died in his first year of college, David's home naturally became his home. Although there never was any official adoption process, George was practically a brother to David and a second son to his parents. They say time is a great facilitator of change. In George's life, time passing by facilitated a few fundamental changes in his life and circumstances. As he grew older, he physically became a little bigger. The two brothers both started going to the gym, but George was building muscle at a much faster pace than David could manage. He was also growing in confidence and even dated a few pretty girls. He was doing extremely well in his studies, but he remained a humble young man who never forgot where he came from. With money George made from small jobs, he saved up to pay for dental and eye surgery to correct some of his physical flaws. Although he wasn't focused on his outer appearance, the two things that always knocked down his confidence were his bad teeth and his thick glasses. People may have suggested that David and George should have followed separate career paths, but they both started working for the same company after the completion of their studies. They were building their careers and working hard to get to the top. Visits to their hometown were placed on the back burner for the next few years. When David's parents reminded the friends of the upcoming 10-year high school reunion, they initially weren't sure if they wanted to go, but mom convinced them to come. Not only did she long for a hometown visit, but there was some personal stuff that the boys had to collect. George and David agreed to go to the reunion and came back home for some family time. The Friday evening started out with a dance and meal in the school hall. When George and David arrived, they were greeted by some familiar faces as well as people they hardly recognized. The two friends had no social media accounts and therefore had no contact with the people from school. They started mingling with the people, but George remained silent, mostly observing the other people. It was only when one of the girls asked who his friend was that David realized that no one knew who was standing next to him. Not a single person knew that the shy, timid boy with rotten teeth and thick glasses had turned into a handsome, well-built young man. The sad part was when the brothers realized that, except for David, there was also not a single person who knew how kind-hearted or intelligent a person George had always been. Now that he had a fancy suit to wear, everybody wanted to know him. They both were painfully aware of the fact that most people at the reunion were still impressed by outer appearance alone. The fact that George and David arrived in a smart car impressed many of their fellow students, while none of them actually knew anything about their lives and their struggles of the past 10 years. After only one hour of keeping up appearances, George and David slipped away from the crowds and lay down on the football pitch, looking at the stars. They even overheard one of the popular girls saying that she was sorry for the way she treated George in school. She could not believe how handsome a young man he had become and wished she had been less vain and judgy in her teen years. But what was done was done. Thankfully, George didn't need those people in his life and was perfectly content with how things had turned out for him. He still had his best friend at his side and with him, he was ready to conquer anything. What do you think of George and David's friendship? Have you ever been bullied as a kid? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.